What's up, boys and girls? This is Ob, aka 3X, back on the mic once again, at last, welcoming you to episode one of the weekly car showcase, the artist formerly known as the weekly upload update. I've already pretty much given you the uh, rundown of how it is that I'm doing things going forward in my previous video, which was the actual weekly upload update. But for those of you who missed out on that, what it is that I had been doing is showcasing the latest creations that I have uploaded to Community Creations. Now, since that's not going to be a one and the same type thing, this video or these series of videos are going to be specifically focused on, simply put, the creations that I have completed. They might not necessarily be uploaded to community creations at the time of me showing them off to you in these videos, but they will be at some point in time of which that will be where the weekly upload update videos will serve their purpose in letting you know when it is that I've uploaded new content to community creations and who those creations are. So, that being said, you can already see on your screen one of the uh, completed new creations for 2018 that I've done. And that is exactly who we're going to start this video off on taking a look at. Let's go, shall we? And so we have here the 2018 version of Angelus Aurelius, the artist formerly known as the God King Orion, who this year will just be simply going by his first name of Angelus. That was a decision I made to kind of uh, counteract the fact that his half-brother, Anastasios Legionarius, also goes by just one name, that being his last name. Obviously, Angelus goes by his first name, so it's kind of a contrast there. But yeah, you can pretty much see, just as he's always been, he's really, really jacked up. The um, inspiration behind Mr. Angelus had always been uh, the character Michael O'Dell, which was actually played by bodybuilder Michael O'Hearn. That was an old uh, American Gladiators type show called Battle Dome that he was in. That was basically the uh, inspiration for this character being a uh, a kind of Roman god type of uh, persona. And then I also kind of sort of sprinkled in a little bit of influence from the uh, boss of the Street Fighter 3 series, Gil, who had that same type of vibe, but just a little more megalomaniacal in his uh, application of it. Even though, obviously, uh, Angelus here is not as much of a megalomaniac or a narcissist as he once was as the God King, as is symbolized by the uh, text you see on the back of his logo there, which says Fallen King. And that's been his uh, MO since he actually lost the XWA World Heavyweight Championship to Christian Phoenix. He feels that he has a, uh, a point to prove to uh, redeem himself and uh, reclaim the honor that he lost in his uh, decadence of being an undefeated champion and being too overconfident in his abilities. So he's gone about trying to uh, hone and fine tune his abilities that much more to make him that more effective. As such, you know, I add little nuances to his movesets, different tricks and stuff like that, but he's always been the same type of uh, power slash technique type of uh, wrestler that uses a lot of amateur style Greco-Roman wrestling moves. So if you want to compare his uh, moveset to anybody, it would be guys like Brock Lesnar, uh, Scott Steiner, as in solo Scott Steiner, 
a lot of suplexes, a lot of big slams, lariats, just really big moves that utilize all of that obvious power that he has in his heavily muscled frame here. So, let's look at the entrance gear for him now. And you can see from the entrance gear, I kind of switched things up as far as his uh, overall theme, whereas while he was the God King Orion, I had him in a much more lavish cape, kind of like a Zeus-ish, you know, godly. Here he more resembles that of a warrior, like a centurion or a gladiator from the uh, Colosseums of ancient Rome, a fighter who has to actually, you know, literally fight to survive. If he loses, he dies. And that's the type of uh, persona that Angelus has adopted in his uh, quest for redemption, so to speak, within the XWA. So I figured, why not have him look the part? Plus, there's the fact that this, you know, Stardust kind of uh, cape here just looked absolutely perfect on him, especially with the embossed feature that you see there. That's the same logo that is on his tights that I just discolored and added the embossed so it actually looks like it's really embossed gold on that plate, which is a very, very cool effect if I do say so myself. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's, it, it's, he fits a theme and he fits it very well, but it's not as cliche of a theme as it might appear to somebody who is looking at it from the first time. You see this guy and you see, okay, he's a very big, strong dude. He has a Roman theme, so he probably uses Roman style or Greco-Roman style wrestling. And he does, which is cliche, but it fits into his character. If you pay attention to his character, which you would only do obviously if you were watching any of my XWA videos, but you get the idea. You can pretty much see his story just by looking at him. And that, my friends, is what makes a good character. So, let's look at his alternate attire now. Attire number two is basically the same, except the uh, logo is different. That is the uh, second logo that I made for him after I uh, gave him his uh, gimmick change. You can't see it on the bottom, but the, uh, the text inside of the uh, scroll thing it actually says Redeemer, which is the name of his new finishing maneuver. And aside from that, it's just basically a swap of colors where for the uh, tights and the knee pads, obviously, I went with metallic gold. Now, I realize that this look kind of makes him look very, very similar in design to that of uh, Sarah Warfield, the golden goddess, if you will, who kind of has the same type of, uh, I guess you could say, approach to her uh, wrestling and her appearance. And that kind of made me think that, you know, maybe I might want to make them an item. Who knows? I mean, I'm really, really seriously hoping, going off on a tangent here, even though I said I was going to make these short and sweet, but once again, I do hope that they make that whole mixed max challenge thing that they've been doing in WWE right now into an actual game mode in 2K19 where you have mixed tag team matches again. They had them many, many moons ago. Obviously, it was different, however, but you can still follow the same format where the guys wrestle the guys, the girls wrestle the girls, but you can have men and women wrestlers in the same matches. I would so totally do something with that that I'm really hoping that it's something that they bring forth because then I can have some very very interesting pairings going forward as far as uh, mixed tag matches are concerned to which one of them may very well be a team between the fallen king here and the golden goddess and see what happens from there just kind of brainstorming but yeah the, uh, the similarities are noticeable, basically, and uh, I might do something with that, so stay tuned.
And then for his alternate attire, pretty much the same idea, just kind of a uh, different take on it. I used the other uh, cape that still kind of have that Roman type of vibe to it. Actually, this one probably has a little bit more of a Roman vibe to it, but it didn't have a chest plate. So I had to use the uh, kind of uh, X strap thing going on there. And I set it to a velvet finish because I had it as a metallic and it just didn't look realistic enough. So velvet it is. I mean, it's not actually an armor that one would use in battle, but it's kind of like a, you know, ceremonial garb or the, you get the idea. It, once again, it conveys the, uh, the, the overall vibe and the uh, theme of the character and it does it extremely well. Once again you see the uh, logo on the back there, same as the back of his tights. I just embossed it in there, just colored it and uh, yeah, I mean it doesn't look as good as I thought it would but it looks good enough to where I'll keep it and that's the way that he is going to appear going forward in the XWA. So yeah, that is Angelus for 2018. He will be uploaded at some point in the not so distant future. Just obviously not in the next couple of weeks as it is that I've already had planned on who it is that I'm going to be re-uploading as per requests that I've gotten in previous videos. But you will have him soon. So yeah, get excited. Next up, in probably one of the quickest conversions from 2K17 to 2K18 that I've ever done, realistically, we have the 2018 version of billionaire Brock Bentley. And I'll admit, looking at his attire, it might actually look a little too basic. I've always said that sometimes all you need are the most subtle of uh, touches to make an attire look specific but I mean I really don't have a problem with it but compared to some of the other attires it kind of looks a little plain but I'm sticking with it anyway because that's always been the type of vibe that Brock Bentley has had he's kind of that old school type of heel obviously uh, a lot of inspiration for his character comes from that of the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, as well as the Nature Boy, Ric Flair, who never really had that extravagant of ring attires. I mean, you know, they had their names on their tights, names on the boots, and either robes or suits that had sequins and gold and all the rest of that stuff. But it was just the way that they carried themselves as characters that was more about them than their actual appearances, which is something that I wanted to try to do with Brock here going forward. So uh, I made a brand new logo that was Ric Flair inspired using a gold style in Photoshop for the uh, text there. And that's just basically it. <laughs> that's the element that is used on his attire. You got the uh, double B's on the boots. The uh, Brock Bentley name logo there will also be on his entrance gear and uh, that's pretty much it I mean I really can't explain anything else because there isn't anything else to explain aside from the hair which you know I kind of changed it back to the uh, spiked up heel Chris Jericho look it just kind of fits Brock a little more than the uh, kind of lower to the uh, scalp style that I had him have in 2k17 and plus, since it's a year in passing, it makes sense for him to have grown his hair out. So, yeah, that explains that change there. But, uh, yeah, I'll have you take a look at the, uh, the robe now for his entrance gear. And again, really, really basic look, but it fits. And that's the most important thing. If it fits for a character, then you don't need to go as extravagant as possible. I mean, it might be nice for the visuals and everything like that, but when you have a character that has character, it's not all that way necessary. 
So there you see again the uh, name logo on the back. I wanted to put the double B's on the front, but there's just way too much feathers going on there. So uh, yeah, it's a really, really simplistic design he's got. But like I said, it just fits his character. It fits the, the style of a uh, wrestler that he is, which has always been that kind of old school, really fundamental type of wrestler. He's not going to hit you with uh, spinning back fists and uh, top rope moonsaults. He's basically your slam, suplex, backbreaker, fist drop type of guy. Really, really grounded in his wrestling style and obviously with those little uh, dirty heelish overtones to him that make him who he is. That being the opportunistic billionaire scoundrel that obviously is now the uh, sole leader of the faction known as World's Finest. So, yeah. There's a lot more going on to him than just his outward appearances, basically. And so, the secondary attire is basically all black. That's more. That that's the most I can say. That's all I got for you there. It's a black color swap, <laughs> which means I just changed the color of the tights. This gives me a little bit of flexibility, actually, because I could just change the color of his tights. So if I want him to have blue tights, I'll just change them blue. If I want him to have red tights, I'll change it red. The only problem is I can't actually match that up with the uh, the robe because it's got those butterflies on it that are a separate color but then again maybe I might just change the color of the butterflies I don't know it's like I can do whatever it is that I want here and it's going to make sense even though thinking about it initially I didn't do it I can change my mind and just make that happen and it's just a simple edit that doesn't involve me moving anything so it's not gonna hurt so yeah <laughs> That is Brock Bentley 2018 for you. Really, really cut and dry. And, uh, you know, he might not be the most uh, extravagant looking wrestler as far as his ring gear goes. But there's a saying that goes, the rich don't show that they're rich. And, yeah, <laughs> we'll go with that. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Next up, we have a second year creation returning from 2017. This is the 2K18 version of the Chicago bully, Clayton Lang. Now, obviously, I had made him last year, kind of inspired by the character Clubber Lang, specifically from Rocky II, a kind of really aggressive uh, bully type of uh, character who is just really really adamant on hurting people that's the only thing he wants to do he wants to hurt people and make money pretty much doing it so uh, yeah he's a lot beefier than he was in last year's version that's thanks in great deal to the improvements to uh, body morphing that they added in 2k17 I mean 2k18 excuse me this year's game uh, the tattoo placement is the same as it was that I had it last year where you have a uh, bull and a bear kind of going headlong at each other. Now in real life the bull would probably win considering the fact that he has horns and the bear doesn't. But it just looks really cool as far as the design goes. They're both tribal designs and they work really well together. So I have him slapped on his chest and his shoulder blades on the back. We have additional tattoos from last year into this year. I basically added the uh, bull logo that I use on his primary attire on his left arm. And the bear logo that I use on his secondary attire on his right arm. Just as add-ons there. And there you see the actual bull logo that I used and continue to use obviously thematic to the uh, 
two of the major sports teams of the Chicago area, that being obviously the Bulls and the Bears, that being obviously the Bulls and the Bears, so this is the uh, Chicago Bull attire. On the back there you have a name logo with the uh, same Bull tribal design there, the uh, red Photoshop style. Name logo is also on the sides of the uh, knee pads and yeah, that's pretty much the uh, primary attire there. And uh, yeah, no entrance gear at this point. I'll probably add entrance gear to him at some point, just trying to figure out what might work for him. Maybe a boxing robe, but I'll really use that boxing robe on somebody else. So I don't want to be too redundant as far as that goes, but it still work. It's minor adjustments. He's pretty much 100% done otherwise. It's just what it is that I want to add to him to make those subtle little uh, character nuances for him. As it stands, he will remain a, uh, a stalwart in the uh, pure division and uh, I'll expand him from there perhaps as a heel character obviously just a matter of who it is that I'm gonna have him matching up against and that is the work in progress at this point figuring out how it is that I'm gonna match these up guys up against each other and things of that nature the booking if you will Anyway, let's have a look at his alternate attire now. So the alternate attire is a little bit interesting on the fact that it's kind of a bit more colorful for a heel character to have. Because generally heels usually wear black or a majority of black in their ring gears. That's like a traditional thing there. But here you have some uh, blue he's got white boots on and things of that nature so scroll in a bit and I have that really really deep blue that is very similar to the uh, color scheme of the Chicago Bears Jersey and obviously the uh, style that I have going on with the uh, logo there as well as on the back there with the name logo and the bear tribal is colored similarly also to that of the Chicago Bears color scheme which is that deep blue orange and white are variants of white and grayish silver as it were here and uh, yeah the rest of the elements are pretty much the same it's just obviously the color of the elements themselves are different the placement is not and then just to kind of uh, be a little bit more of a nod to the Bears because they usually wear white sneakers and like white socks with the stripes I decided to go with white boots for him as opposed to coloring them black or the same color blue as uh, the rest of his ring gear and it, it only made sense for me to make his hand wraps white as well just to kind of be a little more uniform with the overall uh, design and it also fits into his character anyway considering he's kind of a uh, valet tudo type of uh, anything goes former pit fighter type of uh, character which curiously enough a lot of the characters that I have in the pure division are yeah I've definitely inspired that whole pure division by design a lot from uh, the undisputed series of movies and you'll definitely see that a whole lot more with a couple of the guys that I'm going to be showing you in uh, future videos or maybe even this video if I get to it but yeah he fits in that mold if you will of the uh, really hard-hitting type of uh, character using a lot of strikes and really really heavy hitting moves so yeah that is the Chicago bully for you for 2018 and uh, looking forward to seeing how much damage it is that he can cause within the pure division 
Maybe some surprises. Who knows? Next up on the list, we have the first of what is going to be many brand new 100% never before seen creations for me. So, this is pretty much part of the rookie class of the XWA for 2018. And if that's not special enough, he's also got one other thing going for him. The fact that he's part of a package deal. That being one of the first true tag teams that I have created for the XWA. That being an actual dedicated tag team unit. And not necessarily a, an alliance of uh, different characters that I've put together to form tag teams such as the Shoguns and Katana and so on and so forth. So, this here goes by the name of Devin Wolf, and he is one half of a brother tandem that is collectively known as the House of Wolves, and anybody who has played Destiny will certainly recognize the reference and you will also most certainly recognize a lot of the elements that I've used on their attires as we scroll in down to the kick pads there that right there obviously is the uh, sigil to a monthly event that happens within destiny a uh, player versus player event known as the iron banner and uh, yeah it's got wolves in it, which kind of makes sense considering their last names are Wolf. And yeah, I was intending 100% to use that symbol on something in WWE games. Obviously, this isn't the first time that I've used any Destiny related logos or uh, symbolism on any of my characters. There was, of course, uh, the, uh, the Oryx design that I used for one of Riot's attires last year and then there's the uh, Queen's Wrath logo that I've used for one of uh, Sierra K's attires this year and so we keep it going here with the Iron Banner symbol for the Wolves. The uh, House of Wolves also is the name of a former house of an alien enemy race in Destiny for those of you who don't know called the fallen they of course are no longer in existence but that's just going off into a whole tangent of story and lore that you probably aren't interested in but yeah i i, I love a game destiny is my number two game behind wwe games yes people still play destiny 2 by the way so before you ask don't ask so yeah it's it's cool for me to be able to put that all together in these special little ways. Anyway, we have an alternate wolf logo going on here on the uh, actual knee pads of the kick pads, which is the same wolf that you see in the Iron Banner logo just on its own. And then in the center there is the actual Japanese kanji for wolf. And then wolf in text form to, you know, be kind of like the uh, name logo for them. This is also on his brother's logos and his uh, attire as well just with certain variations that variation actually comes specifically on the uh, tights which is another reference to destiny which is also a reference to something else I unfortunately do not remember where it came from it was a book it was a piece of literature that destiny uses as a reference to its uh, camaraderie and such and uh, the, the phrase here is, as you can see, the strength of the wolf is the pack. There's another half of that phrase that says the strength of the pack is the wolf. And that is a feature that you're going to see on his brother's attire. And then you see another alternate wolf logo. This is a tribal wolf, not Destiny related, but yeah basically really really simplistic and I like how it all just came together the black and gold 
the the wolf logos, the symbolism, the phrases, everything is just really awesome how it all came together. And like I said, this is 100% new content. These are characters that I came up with this year. And not only this year, but over the course of the last week, they're really, really fresh characters. And obviously, like I said, the point was I wanted to have actual true tag teams in the XWA to kind of expand the tag team division. That way I could have more tag team matches as opposed to just, like I said, having, you know, to put together teams with existing characters like WWE does because that's lame. Tag team wrestling needs to be a thing and it needs to be a regular thing. Luckily, WWE is kind of getting back onto that. They were, they were there. But they kind of fell off for a while, but they're getting back there again with the teams that they have in NXT and the focus that they have on the uh, main roster primarily. Even though on Raw it's still patchwork teams. I love the bar and all, but Sheamus and Cesaro are kind of more known for singles you know, competition than they are for tag teams. Well, more Sheamus than Cesaro. Cesaro's been on way too many tag teams. Uh, they need to put him and Cassius Ono back together. Resurrect the king of... Resurrect the kings of wrestling, WWE. Book it, Vince. Anyway, tangent over. Let's scroll in and take a look at the uh, tattoos here. Once again... The same uh, Iron Banner Wolf. This is another kind of element that you're going to see on his brother. Now, bearing in mind, the layout is similar, but they're not twins. Uh, Devin here is actually the older of the two. And then his brother is the younger, so it's kind of more like a Hardy Brothers type of thing. So you see the uh, wolf tattoo on the uh, right arm. Wolves are definitely a prominent theme on these two guys, for obvious reasons. Now the other thing I'm going to mention in quick reference here is the face, because it's an interesting face. It is actually a face texture of Tom Cruise. Now normally I don't use celebrity faces, as in well-known A-list type celebrity faces, because those are usually the most commonly used faces on creations. But I found this really cool edited photo of Tom Cruise with a bald head. Yes, he got a bald head. And it looks good. Like, Tom Cruise would actually legitimately look good with a bald head. If there was ever any role that he took that involved him shaving his head, it would not look bad, as you can clearly see there. And it was cool, so I decided, you know what, we're going to go with that. Especially considering the fact that I had to find brand new face textures for them specifically um, I had different textures I actually had planned on making them twins but then I said no that's a little too cliche we're gonna make them an older younger tandem and so then I had to find two brand new faces so there you go and we take a look at his ring gear pretty much the uh, cutoff shirt which I finally found because I've seen it on so many other creations and I'm like, where is it? It's not in there. Where is it in the game? And then I realized they just basically put the uh, primitive logos over the Ascension shirt because it's not a, uh, uh, a custom shirt. It's not one of the defaults. So that's what I did. And uh, we put the, the, the wolf logo there, the tribal one. And the uh, strength of the wolf is the pack phrase on the back there and it results in a very very uh, cut and dry but really really cool and stylistic entrance gear for him I actually wanted to give them more of an athletic type of entrance gear because the vibe the format for them is uh, they're basically based off of Red Dragon they kind of are a hybrid of technical wrestling with uh, martial arts, mixed martial arts type things. Kind of like Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly are. And uh, a lot of times they come out in like warm-up jackets and even the uh, compression shirts, like the Under Armour shirts. 
Unfortunately, they don't have anything that can pass off as Under Armour shirts that would not cover, or that that covers up the uh, the wrist pads. Like there's the uh, Jeff Hardy shirt, which is tight enough to pass off as one, but it goes under the wrist wraps and it doesn't look right so I couldn't use that as much as I wanted to so instead we go with this shirt here and then I have a variation of a, of a warm-up jacket on his brother that you will see and uh, yeah it's just me experimenting with stuff I, I, I want to make things that are a little more uh, unique and different than other creations especially in terms of little nuances like entrance gears and stuff like that but Sometimes you just gotta work with what it is that you got. And that's pretty much been the story of me in making creations for these games for as long as it is that I've had. So, yeah, more of the same. Anyway, let's look at his alternate. So for the alternate attire, we just basically flipped a couple of things around. Uh, the uh, logo work that was on the kick pads, it now appears on the uh, trunks. So you have the uh, Japanese wolf logo and the Iron Banner logo on the trunks. And then down low, you got the Iron Banner logo on the knee pads and the uh, gold tribal wolf on the kick pads, kind of alternating in directions there. One facing left, one facing right. Really simple swap, just creates a different look, but the same type of uh, layout, so to speak didn't want to go with too many variations for them specifically on the fact that there's not a whole lot of colors that go well with gold there's black there's probably green there's red and I didn't want to go too uh, vibrant with them I didn't want them to be have that colorful of attires because that doesn't fit in the scheme and the frame of their uh, personas they're really really kind of like aggressive fighters like they they're they're out there to to win they're out there to compete and not necessarily to uh, be flashy and so on so uh, yeah now that was a pretty quick explanation wasn't it let's look at his entrance gear so the entrance attire is just basically the uh, full blown non cut off version of the shirt as it would be if you were to have bought it yourself from xwashop.com that store doesn't actually exist but if it did then yeah you, know, you could buy the shirt for only 20 bucks buy the shirt buy the shirt but yeah pretty cut and dry you know nothing too fancy there just same layout just change the actual shirt itself to be a traditional walkout and uh, yeah that in a nutshell is Devin Wolf half of the house of wolves coming soon to a community creation server near you now let's take a look at his younger brother and so we have the other half of the house of wolves team this is the younger brother Damon wolf and you can clearly see that a lot of the uh, layout placements for his ring gear is similar to that of his older brother just different in its uh, orientation obviously on the tights there we have the uh, reverse direction of the uh, tribal wolf head design and uh, the other half of the phrase or saying that I actually did my research on to find out the origins from uh, I said it was from destiny and then that from another source that source being uh, Rudyard Kipling, who of course is the uh, legendary writer who wrote the Jungle Book, as in the original actual Jungle Book, not the Disney adaptation of it. And you know, pretty much the uh, the phrase is as it is that I have uh, laid it out there. The actual quote is: "For the strength of the pack is the wolf, and the strength of the wolf is the pack." Now, in Destiny, they actually flipped it around to saying the strength of the wolf is the pack and the strength of the pack is the wolf. So that's the orientation that I've used for these guys with the first half 
the actual second half in the actual quote being for the older brother and then the second half which is actually the first half in the actual quote being for the younger brother if that makes any sense at all you might need to rewind that just to get a full explanation there but pretty much that's where it comes from that was one of the basis that I had used to deciding to actually coming up with the uh, actual characters themselves and their theme and motivation and so on so yeah there's a bit of backstory to that and I'm going to be elaborating it on to that in uh, future presentations of them as they are competing within the uh, tag team division but aside from the uh, the flip of the uh, logos on the tights there the logos on the kick pads pretty much the same as his brother and the layout of the tattoos is just basically reversed where we have the uh, iron banner wolf there on the chest just on the opposite side of his older brother whereas Devins is on the left Damon's is on the right you also notice on the top there it's a glory whereas on the top of uh, Devin's tattoo it says honor once again that's just all part of the uh, whole overall overarching theme behind these two guys and what it is that they're all about you see a different wolf logo wolf tattoo excuse me on his left arm whereas it's on the right arm of Devin's and then a uh, different design wolf tribal logo on the back pretty much the same theme just different elements within it to uh, kind of symbolize the uh, you know brotherly aspect of them despite the fact that like I said it's a older younger brother tandem as opposed to it being twins even though obviously they still share a lot of uh, similarities as far as their uh, attire goes I tried to make them look different as far as their uh, physiology but I still wanted them to have a certain amount of size to them they're both around the 240 to 255 pound range because obviously I don't make small wrestlers so yeah that kind of carries over there but yeah that's pretty much the uh, primary look for Damon Wolf here we will have ourselves look at his entrance gear now and so for the entrance gear you see the uh, sport jacket the uh, the warm-up or track jacket if you will with the uh, added decoration of the uh, actual wolf logo there on the uh, left side and on the right side once again the uh, phrase the strength of the pack is the wolf both of those phrases are strong enough to where they can actually be their own logo so you got one for Devin that being his uh, walkout shirt and then one for Damon here being the uh, jacket flip it around and you'll see the uh, wolf kanji logo on the back so it's kind of like a, a team branding so to speak like I said I really wanted to actually give them kind of like a muscle shirts or compression shirts like Under Armour but didn't work out due to uh, you know the uh, limitations of features available in game hopefully they add that in 2k19 I guess that would depend on if somebody actually comes out wearing a shirt like that like I said Red Dragon used to rock those things all the time in Ring of Honor but you know it's WWE so now everybody ever is wearing a you know, shop zone merchandise or you know something else actual branding or merchandising not actual robes or original ring attire with certain exceptions like you know Oscar and Bobby Roode Charlotte Flair people like that you know, there's too many people who wear t-shirts out to the ring in WWE which is a shame it kind of takes away from you know a little bit of character originality but yeah what can you do anyway now we will take a look at his alternate attire 
And his alternate ring gear is pretty much identical to that of uh, Devin's ring gear. No variation here. The placement of the logos is pretty much the same as it is on his. So on the left side, you got the Iron Banner logo. On the right side, you got the Wolf Kanji logo. And uh, we did make a little bit of variation actually on the uh, kick pads on the fact that they're still the same layout here as his primary so yeah I, I actually did do a wee bit of variation between their uh, alternate attires because I didn't want them to look completely identical it's just that I kind of forgot that I did that until I just came reviewed them just now so slight correction on my part but other than that pretty much the same look the same feel, the same vibe, and uh, it all comes together extremely well. So, uh, yeah. And then for his entrance gear, I decided to give him a walkout shirt as a variation of the uh, track jacket. So, you see the uh, strength of the pack is the wolf phrase, the iron banner underneath that, and then you got the wolf logo in the back. Pretty good standalone shirt there. I mean, it's it's cool enough to wear. If I actually did like Destiny Nilly related uh, stuff, like merchandise, shirts, and things like that, this could be a pretty cool Iron Banner shirt because wolves and things like that are actually a kind of thematic element to uh, Destiny's lore specifically to the Iron Lords of the Iron Banner, which this symbol represents. And, uh, yeah. Aside from that, it just looks really freaking cool. In the long and the short of it, you know, taking nothing else away from it, it looked damn good. And that's all the motivation I need right now. So, yeah. There you have the House of Wolves brand new characters for VXWA in 2018 brand spanking new tag team and uh, they won't be the first of either or they won't be the last of either I should say that you will be seeing in subsequent showcase videos so be on the lookout for that and with that we will put this weekly cost showcase video to a close and I hope that you've enjoyed it I try to make this a bit shorter because I have a lot of content that I have to get through and uh, I know you guys wouldn't mind longer videos that show off as much as possible but the problem here is that those videos take just a wee bit too long for me to render and edit so I want to try to make them short and sweet. That way I can get them out to you guys faster. So that's how that goes. Anyway, thanks once again for watching. Make sure you like this video if you enjoyed it. And subscribe to my channel for more weekly showcases, weekly upload updates, core university tutorials. Those are coming too. And of course, the XWA shows themselves that will be showcasing all of these creations in actual action. So you're not just looking at them standing still and doing poses and stuff like that. So, yeah. That'll do it. Thanks for watching again. Again, I keep saying thanks for watching, but thanks for watching. Until the next time, this is Obi, aka 3X, signing off. See ya!